Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And Shalom to the whole four electors, Paya Allah for the GMS London camp. And this video here, um, this art, I have an article from the Washington uh, Wall Street, I'm sorry. And basically, this this um, this article shows the mindset of Christians today, okay, which Christian and more so it shows the mindset of Christians is not in alignment with the Bible, okay, because um, we'll get into it as we go through the article. This Sunday, some churchgoers may choose to pack guns with their Bibles. Congregations face face question of security at services in wake of Texas shooting, a responsibility to protect the flock. Okay, now the first thing I gotta say is well that that ain't the, the, the what is the flock? All right. Okay. Just bear with me. Okay, the flock. So bear with me. It's all impromptu right now. This is Matthew. Now you know the word flock is basically a, 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 a the plural form of um, sheep. Like you have a shoal of fish, which is a grouping of fish. You'd have a parliament of owls, and you'd have a flock of sheep. Okay. So this is Matthew 10 and 5. These 12 Yahweh Shai sent forth and commanded him, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, first and foremost, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. So the, the Lord told his disciples not to go to the Gentiles or to any of the Samaritans, anyone that's a heathen nation. Verse 6. But go, go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, so that's... That's who Yahweh Shai commanded us to go to. That's who we're sent on to. Damn, man, I forgot the uh, scripture was. So bear with me. Oh, man. All right, this is Ezekiel. Thirty four and thirty one, and ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men. I am your power, and I'll be your Lord power. Okay, so Israel is a flock, and then more so, the flock is dealing with men. Now you go up in all these churches, you're gonna find a majority of women in these churches. Okay, so reading on, as he does every Sunday, uh, the the R T Reverend C Cancel Ned the second and. Anglican rector put on his collar and robes to offer mass at his central Pennsylvania church. Now he's considering wearing something else with his religious vestments, his handgun. <laughs> and, and this is the thing. When you go into the scriptures, the Lord don't tell you to go out there with no handgun. All right. He did, he did at one time tell them to go out with a sword, but then, you know, to take swords. But then we got to recall what Peter did when he cut off Malchus' ear with precision. The Lord said unto him, put, you know, put your sword up in the sheath. They that live by the sword um, die by the sword. So basically, the sword we're meant to live and die by is, is the spiritual sword of the scriptures. As it tells you, in, you know, the spiritual sword being told of in Galatians 6. Okay. That's why we're told to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. And it was said that through great tribulation we shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. And even Revelation chapters 2 and 10 tells us to be faithful unto death. Then it'll be laid up for us a crown. So basically death is a, a very um, a very 
um, possible outcome with you endeavouring in this truth. That's that's a possible thing that could happen. But we got you got to walk in the spirit, man. The Lord's going to defend you. You've got to have faith that the Lord will defend you. And then take the attitude Job took of even if he slay me, I'm going to take my trust in him. Okay? So if the Lord takes you out, then you still have to roll the punches, basically. As Pennsylvania State Council, Dr. Ned can bring his gun just about everywhere, to the grocery store, to the park, and to the synagogues, and to other houses of worship, where he often acts as security. His church was the one place where he didn't, where he, where he went unarmed. Weapons do not belong in a church, he said, but as a bishop, he has a responsibility to protect the flock, he added. But that church is not the house of God. Okay, I told you in Acts 7, the most high dwelleth not in temples made of hands. And that's a temple, you know, a house made of hands. The, that The temple today is a third temple which is being built up spiritually by us being lively stones, okay, and being joined together where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. So once the men of the Lord, the, the Lord is the flock of his pasture being the men where they gather two or three in the spirit, coming in the name of Yahweh, Bar Shem El Shai, that's basically a, a temple, man. All right, and that's why we have our own. T our body is a temple, and we're meant to, you know, stick to the law and be undefiled because we're the lively stones to be part of the body of Yahweh Shai. Okay, so real. Once, once, one week after a shooting at Texas ch church, one week after a shooting at a Texas church left twenty six dead and twenty more wounded. Congregations gathering for worship around the country. Sun Sunday once again faced the question of security. Along the last frontier where many gun owners went on unarmed, the faithful are now considering whether they should bring their firearms to their house houses of worship as well. Many who live near Sutherland Springs, Texas, where last week's shooting took place, said they didn't bring their weapons into the houses of worship. Tommy Barker, who attends Christ Lutheran Church of Elm Creek in Seguin, Texas, about 50 miles north of Sutherland Springs, said her husband didn't have the firearm he is licensed to carry on him last Sunday when the church was locked down following a shooting at a nearby First Baptist Church. But she said he planned to have to have it with him this Sunday why would we take a gun to church church or school we feel like we ought to be safe she said on Sunday nearly a week after the shooting but he's not leaving home without it now and that shows you the spirit of Yahweh Shai is not in that temple man you know what I mean they, 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 they're questioning their faith everything they stand upon to now be like look we need to bring guns in because they're the same people that be saying that God, you know, there's no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But that, that carnal weapon is prospering. Okay. Miss Barker 60 thinks our worshippers will feel the same. And she and said she told her pastor that a church should probably make note of who is armed in case any emergency arises. I've told everybody. I told my pastor. I told not going to be a sitting duck or a fish in a barrel she said we know all about the wackadoodles and the copycats houses of worship among the softest of soft targets with inherent missions and traditions emphasizing peace and welcoming since 2012 there have been at least a dozen deadly shootings at the house of worship churches synagogues mosques and Sikh temples have struggled to balance their desire to provide an open sanctuary for the community with security. And even you had them dozen shootings, you had that Jake Church, that Dylan Roof, I believe his name was, he shot up and basically killed a lot of Jakes in there. You know, I think the number was in double figures, like 11 or 12 or something like that. Really, what the fuck was he doing up in there, man? That shows you Jake. Jake is simple, and that goes back to what he said about the doctrine of Christianity 
being about peace and love and everyone's open to come in. The Bible doesn't say that, man. I read it earlier on about we're only sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the congregation of the, his, his pastures, men. Okay, and even the word congregation means um, basically is like a, another word of another way to say um, a, a, a grouping of sheep, basically. So these we're, we're going out there. When we got that's why they're saying for the women, the women is is basically covered under the cloak of her husband, who basically is the head of her household. Okay, so that's really what she's got to worry about, man. But reading on man in recent years many houses of worship have installed cameras and hired armed guards after the shooting last sunday ken paxton the texas attorney general said churches need armed protection another shooting is going to happen again so we need people in churches either professional security or at least eight arming some of the parishioners he said in an interview on Fox News. Okay. So that's really the point, man. You know, I'll grab some scripture. Because it shows you that these these people are not really about the scriptures the way that they talk. You know, they talk they are. Because if they really had faith in the Lord, the Lord would be protecting them. But ultimately, they, they would understand what's going on. But they don't even. This is the whole set. The whole um, contingency that they're taking is based upon man. There's nothing. There's no no scriptures being read. No, you know, no scripture saying, "Look, we need to do this." I you could know, skim through it and see if there's any scriptures being quoted. But there's no no scriptures where they're saying, like, "Look, according to this scripture, we're meant to do that," because their whole thing is about peace and safety. All right. You know, comforting people with, um, you know, kind words and whatnot. So this is completely out of the doctrine of Christianity, which shows you it's a lie, man. Because they don't even stick to what they believe in, all right? They're doing something in accordance to, you know, their carnal laws, all right? They're not walking in the... They didn't turn to the scripture and say, yo, why is this happening? Why are people getting shot in the church? Oh, Acts 7, 4, 47... Forty-eight. They ain't, oh no, the most high dwelleth not in temples made of hands. We we need to go out. Like, what what you know? Oh, Revelation chapter one. The Lord is a so-called black man. They ain't doing that. They ain't opening the Bible. They're basically seeking their own righteousness by going to arm themselves with guns. But they don't even know where the gun is a blessing for, or who specifically it's a blessing for. So this is Second Corinthians ten and three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the mighty through Yahweh by Hashem El Shai to the pulling down of strongholds. That's right. We don't war after the flesh. We know that we have a weapon known as the spirit, and it tells you in Hebrews four and twelve, I believe, that um, the basic that sword, man, the spirit cuts down to the it. it the son of a spirits, man, it cuts through bone and marrow, man. That's our weapon, truth, okay? A mighty weapon it is. And even when you go into the history, it tells you that Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that slayeth the, the killeth the prophets, man. The prophets, those that presented the word of the most high power, prophesied the word of what Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai was bringing on to the people. They suffered, you know, many of them suffered deaths as well as many of them were, were delivered from woes but the point being is that when they came out they were, they were going hard in the spirit with the word man and cutting people in two through that that's why Yahweh Shai when he spoke it said there was a time when they gnashed on their teeth and sought to throw him off of a cliff why? because the word is that powerful that's the weapons of our warfare okay casting down a, you know pulling down strongholds and strongholds of what? Caesar Borgia many different things. So verse 5, casting down imaginations of every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of Yahweh and bringing it and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Yahweh Shai. So that's what we do. When we go out on the highways and byways and teach his word, we're bringing everyone into the obedience of the Lord, man. 
and giving him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to who it pertains to. Okay, being a man of the nation of Israel. So with that, man, I pray you edify it. I say shalom.